G'day, been a while since I've made a proper channel video, so I thought I'd take you through a takeoff safety brief and a simulated engine failure while I'm on a quick ferry from one of her bases across to the other one, 10 miles away. So we'll get the Duchess started with our flow. Jumps are on, jumps are open, the carb heats are cold. Leave those back for the moment, those are cracked open, those can, pumps can stay off. We'll go to battery master on we've got three greens and the gear lights altimeters are set and set they're gonna should be off someone's left them on circuit breakers are all in okay and we're right to give it a prime so we'll go mixtures up we'll turn the pumps on and dutch is a bit funny and then it's got a primer on the starter but we'll clear left no one's there we're going to chop up push the switch in before we engage the starter to prime it Turn the starter, release the switch. A bit more prime. There she goes. 7,000 RPM. Water pressure's come up into the green. Now our left boost pump can go off. And our left alternator can go on. The under voltage light's going out. And we'll just repeat the same procedure for the right hand side. Now it's in our way. Pushing in, engage the starter. Release the primer, release the starter. There she goes. Thousand RPM. Oil pressure come up into the green. Right boost pump can go off, and right alternator can go on. Now turn the ambulance masters on. One and two. And go get it on. Okay, one, two, one, two, I can hear myself. Fairly unfortunate, many would say. Belleron, oh, off for the moment, on top two. Two supplies. Okay, doke, so while we're sitting here waiting for the engines to warm up, we'll run through our temp fish check. So, trims are uh, Set for takeoff, set for takeoff, set for takeoff. Mixtures are rich. Magnetos on both. Masters are on. I've got the masters are on. Propellers are full fine. Park brake is off. Park brake is off. Fuel, we are on the centers. We've got proper quantity and we've got proper pressure. Collapse, set zero, indicating zero, visually confirmed zero. Instruments, we have our compass and DI aligned. That one slaves itself, so, so it should be aligned. Altimeters are set, AH is stable, and we'll set up our GPS on VFR 10 miles. So we'll just use this one for a bit of situational awareness once it finds its position. Uh, switches, we will go our navs on now. We won't use the strobes till we line up and get the taxi on. Controls, full, free, and correct. And our hatches and harnesses are secure. Cameras attached to the door, so I hope it doesn't open. This one's shut, rear's shut, and click, click, front, back. I've got a seatbelt on. Thank you, Doc. Now we'll pull out our hard checklist and confirm that we haven't missed any of the important items. So, uh, fuel is on both. On Oops, so zero. Trims, set, set, set. Enunciators, my enunciators out, and I use that as a quick check of the temperatures and pressures again as well. Okie doke, so we're just waiting for the oil temperatures to come up. And we're going to taxi for a runway 26 departure. We've got some workmen on the, on the longer runway. A little multi training, one of the things I find that people are a little bit rusty on is the takeoff safety brief. Uh, there's three three parameters that or three circumstances that we've got to account for. So one of which is an engine failure while we're still on the runway. Everyone's usually fairly onto that one. Airborne and below our blue line, which is our single engine best rate of climb speed, and airborne at or above our 85 knot blue line, which is again our single engine climb speed, so giving us the, the best rate of climb if we've got one engine out. So 
we have an engine fire fail with major abnormality whilst we're still on the runway, we're going to close the power levers, maintain directional control, pull up on the remaining runway. That one's fairly straightforward. The one that uh, the people get a bit in an area of confusion is the one that we're airborne, but we're below our 85 knot blue line. So that one, if we're below the 85 knot blue line, but already airborne, people have a thought that they could try and get to blue line, but you're not going to make it because you just don't have that uh, that um, sufficient excess power on, uh, on one engine. So we've got to maintain directional control, close the throttles, and we're going to land on the remaining runway. And we've got to be very hard on ourselves about um, about that rule because these uh, these aeroplanes just don't have the um, have the power to get um, above blue line with with one engine out. If we're uh, at or above our blue line, though, we um, we can then uh, continue the takeoff. So we'll maintain directional control, and we need to make sure we've got full power on the live engine and reduce the drag of the aeroplane as best we can. So the way we do that is we confer mix up. Pitch up, power up, gear is up, flap is up, identify the dead leg, dead engine, because we're keeping straight with the rudder against our live engine. So let's uh, say for this demonstration it's the right one. We go dead leg, dead engine is the right engine. We confirm it with the throttle by cycling it to make sure we've got no yaw change. That'll confirm we have got the correct engine. We'll flag it back to idle so it's the one lever sticking out. And we'll confirm we've got the correct engine, which in our simulated situation is the right, and then we feather it. We'll make sure that we climb out at our 85 knot uh, blue line. We can then go precision power, precision trim, which uh, after takeoff, precision power is still going to be full in the Dutch S, and uh, precision trim, we can wind in a um, bit of rudder trim and aileron trim to be able to help ourselves uh, keep the aeroplane flying at our blue line, because you know, that's our best rate of climb speed with one engine out. We then fine tune that by giving up the five degrees angle bank towards the live engine and uh, half ball deflection towards the. Uh, towards the uh, live engine, which uh, gives us a combination of a little bit of slip and a little bit of skid, which we can go through in another video. Almost up there with our oil temps. We'll uh, taxi and backtrack for the runway and do a run-up once we're getting close. I do normally prefer to do the bumps before entering the runway, just so that we're not holding up traffic or anything like that, but uh, given the circumstances with all the work around the run-up bay, we'll um, bundle down and we'll hold on the runway while we do it. Now we've got base or final, it's good. We'll line up and do a run up, and then we want to be in no rush to make sure that our line up checks are done as well, because we find that when we're trying to do things on the runway, everyone gets in a little bit of a rush, so we don't want that to happen. Okie doke, so, up my window. Push the mixtures up for the run up. T's and P's are all in the green, holding the brakes. 1500, do a feather check, just as important as our takeoff safety brief because we need to know the top wheel feather in the event of an engine shutdown, uh, your temperature pressure is still in the green, 2000 for a mag check and another prop cycle, I'll do the prop cycle first, just gives a little bit more time to burn off any carbon that's sitting on the plugs if they're a little bit fouled. Okay, that's fine. And we'll do a mag check. I've got my head to these days. The sense is too good. So I can't hear the drop. Everything looks happy. Temperatures and pressures are in the green. We've got good suction and our air meter is a positive output. Now if we're coming back down to check our idle. And we'll reset a thousand RPM. Well, friction is firm, and I'm going to rerun our, uh, our hard checklist just because we've had a delay since we did it. Fuel still on flaps, still set zero. Trims set, 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 and enunciators are still out. Temperature pressures look good. Okay, so now I'll do the takeoff safety brief as if we were actually going to do it uh, for real just before lineup. So if we have an engine fire fail with major abnormality whilst we're on the runway, we're going to maintain directional control, pull the power levers to idle, and brake on the remaining runway. If we're already airborne and below our 85 knot blue line, we're going to maintain directional control, power levers to idle, land on the remaining runway. If we're already airborne and at or above our 85 knot blue line with the gear either up or in transit, we're going to maintain directional control and confirm mix up, pitch up, power up, gear up, flap up, identify the dead leg, dead engine, we'll confirm. 
confirm it with the throttle, we'll flag it, and we'll feather it. We'll then climb out at our 85 knot blue line, 5 degrees angle of bank towards the good engine, half ball deflection towards the good engine, and precision power, precision trim, so full power, and seeing the trims to be able to maintain that uh, climb configuration at 85 knots. Okay, so our lineup checks, mixes are full rich, pedo heats we don't need today, pumps, one, two, we'll go on, instruments are still set, switches, our landing lights can come on now, transponder can come to alt, trims, confirming we have set, I'm very strict on those, and traffic, we'll make our radio call, we'll be for an up and departure. Joe Malin, Juliet, Victor Foxtrot, Duchess. Lines up and rolls runway 26 up a departure for Cessna traffic. Okie doke, we'll make sure that oil pressures come up nice and evenly and accurately up to 1500 RPM. And we're happy with that, so we'll release the brakes. A little bit of wind from the right, so a little up to the right. Okay, everything's coming up evenly, airspeed is alive. RPMs are governing, manifold pressures are static, temperatures and pressures in the green. Right, positive back pressure and she'll fly when he's ready. Brakes, gear up, and there's through our 85 knot blue line. We're now pitching for blue line plus 10 to 15, so that we've got a little bit of a buffer on that speed. They can see that the uh, transition between airborne and blue line is very short, uh, but that's... Uh, that's the spot where it um, sort of leads us in no man's land and an engine failure. We've got to be very strict on ourselves to put it back on the deck. Uh, we're through 500 there. We'll set climb power, 25 inches, 2500 RPM. And we're only going 10 miles, so we'll only go to 1,500 feet. Okay, so while we're on route, we'll uh, have a look through a simulated engine failure. So I'm going to do this one with the mixture. I'm not actually going to feather the prop because we are so low. I'm going to go back into land. I don't want to have to unfeather it. No one's feathering accumulators on this particular aeroplane. Uh, but I tell everyone that the uh, the main thing with these engine failure drills is that slow is smooth, but smooth is fast. Obviously, we want to be so slow we don't do anything. But slow enough that we're not going to miss things. That extra split second it's taking you to be accurate is uh, going to save your life rather than rushing through things and missing something. So, let's have a look at a simulated uh, left engine failure. So, I'm going to pull the mixture to idle so the engine has cut off. And I'm going to maintain directional control. Wings level, all centred initially. We're going to confirm it. Mix up. Pitch up. Power up. Gear is up. Flap is up, and at this point the aeroplane's now flying. It's not flying well, but at least it is flying. And so that's what I mean about being slow and smooth and smooth as fast. We're making sure we haven't missed anything. We can now confirm dead leg, dead engine. So the dead engine is the dead leg, sorry, is the left. Dead engine is the left. We'll confirm it with the throttle. We've got no yaw change, so we know that's the correct engine. We'll flag it back there so it's very obvious to us which one it is, and we would then feather. But I'm not going to actually feather because I'm going to start it back up again. So leaving the power back there. And you can see there that even without it feathered, it's just maintaining height. Well, if we feather the prop, we get a lot better performance out of it. And I mean, I am light at the moment, so that's why it is performing fairly well without it feathered. But the main thing being we're nice and accurate on these drills and don't miss anything. So we're getting close to the circuit area now, so I'm just going to give myself that engine back. There, it's coming alive again. I'll pull the good one back. That's the gear warning. There we go. It's happy, and we'll pull... Pop back as well to 24. Going to now come straight back to our circuit power setting and descend down. And we'll join. What, runway 35. Um, the spacing I teach in the Duchess is roughly put the wind tip on the runway. That usually works out fairly well for downwind spacing. Around. I don't really blame them given how rough it is out here. Holding a fair bit of drift on downwind too. Okay, so pre landing checks, brakes have pressure, heels back on the floor, park brakes off, undercarriage. We are below 140, which is a gear speed in the Dutch S. We can go gear down 
and I hold my hand on it until I know it's cycled. I've got three greens, so that I don't take my hand off, get distracted, and then uh, miss it. it. Hasn't actually come down. Good. One, two, and three down and locked. And this one doesn't have a mirror. Some have a mirror on the cow. It's undercarriage. Mixtures are full rich. Fuel. We've got sufficient quantity. Tanks are on. Pumps are on. Instruments. Uh, still set DI to compass. U and H. I'm happy with. Switches. Landing lights. Taxi lights and hatches and harness are secure. Clear right, centre above right, left. Car beds can come on. Power's back to about 15 inches. Inside the wide arc for the flaps will take one stage. One, two, three. So it's just not to do with the cockpit. That's just 10 base. I'm going to be full stop. Traffic says not. Okay. Good. Clear right, clear centre above, clear left, and you'll notice the wingtip still cutting the, uh, well, depends on the angle of the camera, but for uh, my eye position, the wingtip was still cutting the uh, runway numbers, so we know we're on pretty good spacing for the duchy. We do have a sort of a, a fairly strong uh, headwind slash left crosswind, so uh, no, we'll get pushed out a little bit, so I've delayed that next stage of flap until on final, one, two, three, there we go. So finals checks, pitches are coming up the full fine, I do it nice and gently so we don't get that big surge. Pitches full fine, undercarriage down, locked, handles down, three greens, flaps, so I'm now committed so I'll take full flap. Our flaps are open, our pits can go to cold. Okay, we'll trim to maintain this picture. Half the windscreen is ground, half the windscreen is sky, and the runway number sitting about three fingers above the dash. Usually works out fairly well. Using down the blue line now. We're committed. We're going to need a fair bit of left aileron along right rudder in this landing. Pitch is full fine, and down, three greens. Due to that left crosswind, power is coming to idle. Eyes to the other end of the runway, and we're aiming to just fly level with the runway. So we'll hold him off, hold him off, brand new runway. So we don't want to put any holes in it. There we go. More aileron as we slow down. Bit more braking. And we'll exit at this runway with that amount of breeze around. I'm going to retract the flaps now. Helicopter waiting for us, so we'll skip that off the runway. Those mixtures. That's not traffic, helicopter, half 44, volume of all these. And the windows we've turned, and the air conditioner on. Okie doke, flaps are uh, confirmed. Up, pedo heat, we didn't turn on, pumps can go off. We'll turn the landing and taxi off for now in the daytime. Bonner can come back to standby. And we'll find somewhere to park next to our chieftain here, I reckon. So just for awareness. This video is just for just for interest. Don't try it yourself. Make a big boo-boo. I was never here. My name's not Toby. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next video.